This video is brought to you by Big Idea Design. They make titanium pocket tools and pins, like the bit bar, which is a screwdriver with a pocket clip and bit storage in the handle, and the TPT and TPT slide, which hold a standard utility blade. They also recently launched a titanium EDC wrench and pry bar, and offer EDC pins like the TI Click, TI Arto EDC, and the TI Pocket Pro. To learn more about Big Idea Design, click the links in the video description, and you can also use the coupon code CARRYON for 10% off your purchase, and if you do, it'll help support the show. Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin, this is the Best Damn EDC, and it's time for another video. And since it's been almost exactly three months since I updated my personal everyday carry, which technically that last video was not my personal everyday carry, it was just a bunch of EDC gear that I like, I figured it was time to update. I just finished the $100 budget carry and it made me think about what I wanted to put back in my pockets. The knife is really kind of a tricky situation right now because I'm starting a sub $50 knife challenge sort of thing, but the rest of the gear, there's so much to go through. I've received a lot in the last few weeks, but there's just so much stuff I want to carry, but I can't carry it all. I gotta pick and choose. So that's what this video is. I'm gonna carry this stuff for a while. I think this is the stuff that I'm gonna keep in my pockets and keep in consistent rotation moving forward. So with that said, let's do the damn thing. So no longer am I stuck with the $100 budget carry and I have kind of gone a little crazy, probably carrying more than I normally would. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I don't know anymore, I don't have an EDC anymore, I just have stuff. Ignoring the knife, this is probably what I'm gonna be carrying for the most part for the next several weeks, if not more, because this is the stuff that I've been eyeing the most while I couldn't carry it. Because there are multiple wallets that actually rotate between regularly. This is the one that I've wanted to carry the most since I started that $100 budget challenge, and this is the Travax Summit wallet, the Armored Summit technically, because it has the RFID blocking armor plate on the top. You don't need it, but it's there if you want, and it just kind of makes getting cards out a little easier but it's just a super minimal wallet made of steel. It's just two thin pieces of steel and a little nylon strap. That's it, it's simple, it's very slim, and it's just effective, and it is perfect for front pocket carry. But I also do rotate wallets pretty regularly just because I like to get a feel for things and I'm constantly trying new things out and I do rotate a little bit. And when I rotate, the Travex Contour is one of the ones that I carry as well. It's very similar to the Summit, but it's just got this leather and it's adjustable. So this one is adjustable in that you can, you know, move that nylon strap by tightening it. You can pull it to tighten it. This one you have T6 Torque screws or T7 and this little strap. So you can move this, this clasp here and you can adjust how thick or how wide that leather is and you can accommodate more or fewer cards. But these are quite a bit more expensive. The Summit, Armored Summit is like 35. This one's like 140 or 150. The thing is this one in front pocket carry gets a little thick because of the leather. So this one's a little better if you carry a little more cash because you've got this pocket on the top here. Whereas this one, you have to slide your cash in underneath this little itty bitty spot right here. So this one isn't exactly geared towards tons of cash. If I wanna go a little classier or something a little more standard, I typically go with the Das Offenimer gun deck wallet. I've had this thing for years. It looks beautiful. This is actually, it's actually run by an American guy. He's actually stationed in Hawaii right now, active duty Navy. He's a really great dude, and I'm actually gonna work with him later this year on doing a full-on feature of the stuff he makes because it's all so great. But this right here is has been one of my favorite wallets for years, highly recommend it. And then the other that I switch to frequently is the Hitch and Timber Card Caddy. And this is if I wanna kinda of carry everything all together. I'll put a utility knife of some sort. This is the Rexford Rut. I also put the Big Idea Design TPT or TPT slide in there, and then I'll take a pry tool or a pin and put it in the other side, as well as my cards. Uh, so this is just kind of minimal, but still organize some gear carry. Those are the wallets that I tend to stick to. The Travex Summit, the Travex Contour, Dasso Fanny Mare Gun Deck, and the Hitchin Timber Card Caddy. Those are my top four wallets. Next up is Flashlight. I don't really switch out a ton. Um, if I do, it's typically between two flashlights. This is the one I've been carrying the most before this challenge, and this is the Olight S1 Arbiton 2 in titanium, the winter edition, so it's blasted titanium. And the reason, I've explained several times, the reason I love this flashlight is just how warm it is. It is a very warm beam, 
Some people don't like that. I truly do. You're looking for things. The warm tone doesn't make things quite as crisp or clear as a bluer tone or cooler tone will do. Um, for that, sometimes when I want to switch it up, I always have this one if my, in my backpack if I'm not actually carrying it, is just the larger version, the Olay S2 Arbiton 2. Same thing, just longer run times, a little higher output, and a much cooler beam. If you want to look at those side by side, you've got warm beam of the S1R, cool beam of the S2R. And that's not going to be the same for all of your S1Rs. There are many different versions of it. There are different versions of titanium. There's a copper one and then your standard aluminum one. And they all have different temperatures of their beams. So you have to kind of look up what all their beams are. It's very <laughs> difficult to follow. Uh, I prefer the warm tone and these are very, very tough to come by now. So if you are looking for the winter edition of the S1R and you haven't been able to find one, you see it come in stock, grab it because it won't last long. Next up, this is the newest piece of gear that's in my current carry. This is the Lynch Northwest All Access Pass 1.5. So I bought the 2.0 from a subscriber a while back and I felt it was just a little too small. This is the same thing, just bigger, but it's just an all titanium pocket tool, like a pry tool, bottle opener with a clip, deep carry clip. It's great. But this tool right here is easily my favorite pry tool of all the ones that I've had. Uh, it's just great ergonomics, really cool. I just like it. It's, it's a little bit of pocket jewelry, but I'm not afraid to use it either. They're about $85, but they're impossible to find. He does drops every so often and they're gone. So I was lucky enough to grab one of these. A few people over in the Discord did. Really awesome addition to my carry. Happy to carry it, happy to use it. Now this is something that I've really struggled with lately and that is my watch. Do you guys know that I was a little upset when the Boulder Expedition Rushmore went out of stock and then was discontinued and they rolled out the second version of it? Not a fan. I don't like that one nearly as much as the original. So I searched high and low for the watch that would work for me. This is the closest I could come without spending a fortune. So I found some watches that I could have bought for, I don't know, five, six hundred dollars. And I would have probably been okay with them. I, I wanted something that was either automatic or solar. And this fit the bill for that. It doesn't have a sapphire lens, so I could very easily scratch this. It's just a mineral crystal lens. Later on down the road, if I really mess this up, I could just replace it with a sapphire. This one has the time tracking I need. So when I'm shooting these videos and Javen isn't here, I need to know how long I've been shooting. So when I start a video, I hit go, the chronograph starts. And I know that when I hit about 28 minutes, I should probably wrap it up and then restart all the cameras. So it's a very small tool, but for me, that is crucial when I'm here shooting by myself. So that's why I chose this watch. I obviously also threw a green NATO band on it, but this is my thing. The only problem I have with this right now is how shiny the watch is. I'm not a fan of the polished, or mirror polished bezel or case. Uh, the sides are satin, but the front is like a mirror polish. There you go, that is my watch. This one is linked down below. I don't remember the exact model number, but it's the, if you, if you go to Amazon and search Citizen Chronograph, that's one of the first ones that'll pop up. So the pin situation is uh, kind of variable right now. I just ordered a pin, it'll be here tomorrow or Thursday. It'll be here this week, that's all I know. Uh, right now I'm carrying this. This is the Urban Survival Gear Tie Scribe Mini in titanium. This is a lightweight titanium. And this is a serious rival to the tactile turn bolt action short for me. And I think this one wins out just a little because it's a little narrower and works with pin loops. Obviously in this carry, I'm not using any sort of organizer, but if I were, this would be a definitive clear winner. If I'm not, then it doesn't really matter. They're, they're interchangeable for me but when I'm carrying something with an organizer, this would be the clear winner. But it is changing a little bit because I'm gearing up for a pen video, uh, but this one is probably my favorite right now in my carry, but I also just bought this from someone in the Discord. This is the Hinderer Investigator in Brass. These turned out to be much smaller. I figured this was a, like just looking at pictures, I thought it was a full size pen. And when it arrived, boy, these are, these are tiny. Like, just barely bigger than a Fisher Space Pin. So this one's in there too. I'm not a huge fan of capped pins, but this is the most solid pin I've ever held, bar none. My pin situation is gonna rotate a little bit, but it's gonna be between some of those. The Tactile Turn Bolt Action Short, the Urban Survival Gear Tie Scribe Mini, the Hinderer Investigator, some of the big idea design pins. Like I'm just rotating through to see what I truly like and gear up for that video. So mine's obviously always gonna be a little bit variable, but multi-tool. Mm, I, I've carried a bunch of different Swiss Army knives, a bunch. Pioneer X, Pioneer, Cadet, 
custom Pioneer, Pioneer X, and my favorite, I even had a classic SD, my favorite is the Mini Champ. This thing right here has a ton of tools in it. It is very small, very compact. It's great, but I actually sold this one tonight. So I gotta ship this one out tomorrow, but I bought the Alox version. I don't care for the tweezers or the pin. This one has a pin in the scale, so you can write with it. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, I don't think I'll ever use that, but this has two knives. It has a Phillips head, it has scissors. So there's one knife, scissors, Phillips. And on this side, you've got a cuticle pusher, you have an orange peeler, you have a flathead screwdriver, your second blade, which I'm gonna try to open that without cutting myself, and a file, a nail file. Just look at that, this thing is crazy for how small and compact it's not the footprint length and width wise isn't any bigger than a classic SD, but the thickness is really all that you're adding to it. And you're getting so many more tools than the classic SD. This thing is definitely, probably, definitely, probably, definitely, probably my favorite Swiss Army knife, just for the sheer amount of the, the density of tools in the size. So these run, I think like 30, $35. The Alex version is like 42, I think is what I paid tonight. It's not exactly cheap, but I know that I've used this thing a ton and I'd prefer to have the Alex version just because I want a little more durable scales, but I'm not opposed to spending $42 on something I know that I'm gonna use and carry all the time. Key situation has been something that I've always struggled with. You guys know this, but recently Tale of Knives sent me its new product, the Keepster, and it's very much like their belt loop organizers where you, you slide your belt on it and then you can clip your keys to it. This right here. But this is different. This is the Clipster. So this is even newer and it just has a retention clip that you put on your belt. And the problem with a lot of different key organizers is that they're so long. So you clip something to like a belt loop and then it's like six inches long and then your keys are on the bottom of that and it's just this long mess that swings and flaps around. This is lined up with your belt. So this actually, the Keepster is a little bit shorter than this, but your keys are hanging about level with the bottom of your belt. And then from there, you have just whatever your keys are. And this right here, is probably the solution that I've been looking for for years for my keys. It's great. It's kind of dad-esque, like it's very dad-esque. It's a very dad thing, but I love it. I am a dad. I am a dad, but this thing is worth its weight in gold. I forgot my Urban Carvers magnetic quick releases. I actually now have a, an affiliate link for Urban Carvers, so if you are interested in those and click the link down below, I will get a little bit of a kickback, so that helps out a ton, but I have my car keys on a magnetic quick release so I can just pull them off and I don't have to unclip them. And then my house key and everything I have on just a little carabiner. And I don't know that I'm gonna keep this on my keys all the time, but this is a monkey's fingernail clip thing. Boom, just push that little button there and you have fingernail clippers. And I thought they would suck. Like I bought them just to see if they were any good and turns out they are. They're actually really good. I like them better than the Swiss Army ones, the Victorinox, and better than my Tweezerman, which is, that takes something for me to say. I've, I've been a, a Tweezerman fingernail clipper snob for years. Uh, these are just as good, and they got a little itty bitty file on the back. So after you clip your nails, you can just. All right, next up is sunglasses. So last week I broke, actually no, the week before, I broke my Woody's. That made the seventh pair that I've broken this year. I've spent anywhere from $10 on sunglasses up to $70. Every single pair that I've bought, I have smashed or broken in some way. And most of them actually end up breaking right above the lens. And I think it's because most of them are a little narrower than my head. So I have to bend them and then put them on. And when I do, it just stresses this piece of plastic. And I don't like metal sunglasses. Like I, I like Wayfarers, which are almost all resin or plastic. So metal doesn't work well for Wayfarers unless maybe I made some titanium ones, hint, hint. But I put out a feeler on Instagram. I said, what are some sunglasses I should try? Because I've broken so many, I don't wanna spend $200 on a pair and break those. What are some rugged, durable sunglasses that I could buy or try? But my friend over at Accessorize Me said, hey, talk to the guys at Distill Union. And I'd been looking at Distill Union stuff because they're semi-local. I think they're Charleston-based. 
They make wallets and tons of other EDC gear. I didn't know they made sunglasses. So they make these. These are their Maglock sunglasses and they are made from a rubber-like or rubber material. So you can't crush them. You can bend them. You can flatten them out. And, uh, you, can, you can bend them, they didn't break. You can bend them, they're flexible. They're very lightweight and comfortable, but look at that. You can stick them to your refrigerator or whatever. They're gonna stick to stuff. And what that means is I no longer have to put my sunglasses here. This is where I crushed the woodies. I picked up a case of water and it just crushed my sunglasses and they broke. They were like two weeks old and I broke my woodies, but you can do this right here. It's stupid simple. It's such a great solution. I like these, they are super comfortable. They look fine, I like them. I would have preferred black, but they were out of stock. And you can twist them. They're flexible, virtually indestructible. They're only $70, so that's I think a good mid-tier sunglass. You're not you know, breaking the bank to buy them. And if you do somehow break them, I think you can replace the lenses, but if you do somehow break them, you're not gonna cry over having to buy them again. Like I don't wanna spend 70 or $80 on a pair of sunglasses. And I think with a reasonable amount of certainty, I can say that these are gonna withstand the force of my daily wear and tear. I don't know for sure, cause I just got them, but these will be the sunglasses I wear every single day. I always have sunglasses on me. I think these will withstand it, I don't know. Verdict's still out, but Core Essentials, the people who that make the belt that I wear, they also reached out and they sent me basically their same version of these. They are not flexible like these but they also have neodymium magnets in the arms and you can stick them to things. They feel much more rugged, but they're kind of bulky. So I, I don't know if those are gonna be my favorite. These definitely feel much better on the head. So I think the Distill Union sunglasses are gonna be my sunglass for a while. But that brings us to the last part of the carry and that's the knife situation. So I'm gonna clear this stuff out and we're gonna talk knives for a minute. So the one year anniversary of the channel happened since the last update and that made me go back and look at my carry last year and when i started this channel i actually did an edc update on the other channel that i have which is modern outdoor dweller rest in peace and and, th and in that video i was carrying a kershaw shuffle diy and like an elastic wallet like i did for the budget carry and just some weird obscure stuff i had a fire starter and a lens brush tool for my camera. I don't know, it was weird. I, I don't know what I was doing looking back at that. But the one thing it made me realize is that my knife collection has gone crazy. After that, I ended up buying a Spyderco Tenacious and a Victorinox Pioneer X. And those were like the gateway knives. Like I had always had some knives, but I'd never really bought a nice knife. The nicest knife a year ago that I had was a Tenacious. But not long after that, I ended up buying this Paramilitary 2 and I sent it to Matt at EDC Alabama for him to customize, put the copper scales on it and whatnot. And that, after that, it was just, it, it's been crazy. But this right here is kind of the rotation that I go through. So I don't carry the same knife every day, but I do switch it up pretty often. I say, I think more than anything, I carry the large Sabenza 21. If I had to choose one of these knives to carry indefinitely, I really don't know where I'd land. Like it would be a toss up between, <laughs> I've tried to say this like five times, it'd be a toss up between all of them, really. It's, I, I can never decide. It's the biggest struggle I have almost every single morning. Like what knife do I wanna to carry today? It's such a struggle, which is the biggest first world problem ever. They're all so good. They are all so good. I'm, I'm gonna go through what these are real quick. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I have acid stone washed the blade and I have a Lynch Northwest clip and a Zero Feud Haterade bead, which I'm probably gonna take off soon. The Large Sabenza 21 from Chris Reeve Knives with also a little Urban Carvers bead. All these beads, except for this one, are Urban Carvers. I have a Benchmade Mini Crooked River, also with a Lynch Northwest clip. The Something Obscene Company J Cape which is a really, really sick knife. The Chavez Ultramar Redencion Street. This is actually the Urban EDC Supply exclusive version with the brass inlay, the Benchmade Bug Out, the Civivi Elementum, and then the Coke Tools KTC2, which I covered this in a video a long time ago. This is a, a pretty interesting knife and I, I really like it, but I don't find myself carrying it a ton. 
I want to start carrying it more. The problem I have with it is that it's D2 and it's partially acid etched and stone washed. And the problem with that is that it rusts. I carried this for like 10 or 15 minutes the other day and it started to gather rust or a couple weeks ago. The day it came in, I threw it in my pocket and it was like 10 minutes later, it had a little bit of rust on the blade. So I'm just putting this out here. I rotate knives. I never carry the same knife for more than a few days in a row. I'm always switching it out, but I'm about to start the best knife under $50, where I'm gonna be carrying the knife that you guys selected, which was the Spider Co Tenacious, the pick from Zach from Blade HQ, which was the Civivi Elementum, which is a really nice knife. I'm excited to carry this one. The knife from Talon Sai, which was the Kershaw Cryo 2. And then my pick, which I've not really chosen yet, but Steel Will wanted in on this video and I wanted to include the cut jack. So they sent a full sized cut jack and I ended up buying a Rat 2 D2 because it was recommended by so many people. And I think it's a staple under 50 bucks. I think I'm gonna throw you guys a curveball for my pick for the best knife under 50 bucks. I don't think you're gonna see it coming. So if you wanna see what that's all about, be sure to watch that video. But starting next week, the CVV Elementum is gonna be the one that I carry this. I wanna start this video off strong and the Elementum is the one that I'm, I'm looking forward to most because as I said in that video that I shot last week, this was my pick and Zach beat me to the punch. So I'm gonna start with this one and then we'll go from there. That's my carry, that's the updated carry. I, th I don't think I'm forgetting anything, no? Oh, I am. One last thing, I have started carrying a handkerchief and this was made by someone in the Discord server uh, by the name of Rue. She makes a bunch of different hanks. She doesn't really have an Instagram that I know of, but if you are interested in buying a hank, she sells these in the Discord and this one has served me well. It wiped up some spilled energy drink here on this table last week and it stays in my pocket every day. It's just a nice little hank, just something that I can wipe a lens off with or whatever. Really, really great thing. I like it a lot. There you go. That's that's my everyday carry or as, as much as I could pare the whole thing down. That is gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And if you wanna purchase anything you saw in this video or you're interested and wanna read more about it, the links for everything mentioned are down below. And many of those, if not all of them, are affiliate links. So if you purchase anything, it does support what I'm doing by giving me a little bit of a cutback, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. You can also go to carry.best to buy merch from me and also branded gear and sometimes just one-off stuff, custom things. Go to carry.best. You can support me directly. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc to support there, but be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at bestmedc. You can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at caspertech. And of course, the guy behind the camera playing on his phone right now and dabbing. <laughs> what? You can find him at Javen Starnes. Actually, don't follow him because he just dabbed. He just ADC dabbed. <laughs> no. Unfollow him. <laughs> With all of that said, and until next time, carry on. I forgot your, your listeners are dabbers. We are anti dab. Like, anti dab. Just hair, knives, wood, dust. We throw knives at dabbers. You know, the Jake Paulers say dab on them haters. Jake Paulers, ah. We, we throw knives at the, the dabbers, and we we join forces with the haters. Um, I think I came up with my, my fan team name. They said they're going to be called the Japesters. Oh, gosh. Don't do that. <laughs> Holy moly. Are you still your, rolling? You're opening your mouth and, like, echoed. Oh, I know. <laughs> I did it for the mic.